if you looked at Moodle last week, you may have noticed something strange. Not only is there last week's lecture, there's also something called an old lecture one and an old lecture two. Um, so this is last year when I was teaching this course, um, near the end of the semester, we also started to do online learning. Uh, and so, and last year I taught two sections. Uh, so these lectures I have also linked on Moodle. Uh, so if you feel like maybe there's something I did not explain very well this year, you maybe can check to see if I did a better job last year. Uh, but also be careful because I did change some of the discussion questions from last year. So I'm the the lectures may not be about exactly the same thing. Um, but yeah, if you need a second opinion, you can ask me from last year. OK, so uh, this week we're looking at chapters 13 to 16. Questions one. How does Anne resolve the awkwardness of having to mention Captain Wentworth to Lady Russell? Why do you think the solution works? Two, the novel mentions that Anne makes visits of charity, Tsisan, in the village of Kellynch. What do you think this might say about class relations of that time and why? Three, what values do you think Mr. Elliot's apology to and reconciliation with Sir Walter might appeal to? Uh, in Chinese, OK, first of all, remember Mr. Elliot is the guy who's like a cousin. Uh, that is not on good relations with the Elliot family. But we know that he later apologizes and comes for reconciliation. So this question asks uh, in Chinese. Mr. Elliot, uh, uh, Why do you think the unfeudal tone of the present day might be a bad thing? Uh, in Chinese, this sentence is 今日不封建的氛围. And this is described as something bad. Why? Four, why do you think Mr. Elliot's personality makes Lady Russell believe that his marriage was an unhappy one? And this idea was later confirmed by Colonel Wallace. By the way, this word Colonel, C-O-L-O-N-E-L, -O -O Colonel, in Chinese I think is like Xiao or social or something like that. Uh, it comes from the French. That's why it's pronounced in a very weird way. Five, Anne says that I suppose I have more pride than any of the other Elliots. Do you agree why or why not? Um, we, we last week mentioned the Elliot pride. And Anne seems to be the only person who doesn't have this pride. And yet here she says that she has the most pride in all the Elliots. Do you agree? Why or why not? Let's look at question one. So um, Anne comes back from Lyme and from Bath. Uh, she meets Lady Russell again. And so she, uh, Lady Russell, of course, has heard that an accident happened to Louisa, so she wants to get the details from Anne. The problem is. Uh, in talking about what happened, Anne has to mention Captain Wentworth. Which is very awkward because Lady Russell is the person who persuaded 
Anne to break off the engagement. And yet Anne still has feelings for Wentworth, so it's very awkward. Um, so here uh, Anne has started to talk to Lady Russell about what has happened. They must speak of the accident at Lyme. Lady Russell had not been arrived five minutes the day before when a full account of the whole had burst on her. So just after Lady Russell arrived, somebody already told her everything that happened. It had burst on her, so like somebody had burst in, and very suddenly. But still, it must be talked of. She must make inquiries. So Lady Russell must have the chance to ask Anne about the details. To make inquiries means to ask questions about details. Um, this is the British spelling. The American spelling starts with an I. Inquiry and uh, the verb to inquire. Just means ask questions. We say to ask questions about, but to inquire into. When Guan Yu Sama the Wendy. Uh, so even though Lady Russell knows what happened, she still has to ask Anne because it is the elephant in the room, right? So this is the opponent. Being in the Huati, so out of politeness, they still have to talk about it, uh, and Lady Russell still has to express her regret. Right. Still, it must be talked of. She must make inquiries. She must regret the imprudence. 就是去万西, Louisa, I think is the best explanation. Remember, regret does not always mean regret for yourself. You can also regret something else or for somebody else. Uh, even in today, like today in modern English, I regret that this has happened. Right? It's not your fault, but you can still say I regret it. Lament the result. Like the accident. And Captain Wentworth's name must be mentioned by both. Both people. Anne was conscious of not doing it so well as Lady Russell. So when Lady Russell mentioned Captain Wentworth, no problem. But Anne has some trouble. She could not speak the name and look straight forward to Lady Russell's eye. In English, we say to look someone in the eye. Means to be sincere, to be honest. So Anne can't do that. Until she had adopted the expedient so she found a workaround. Not a solution. A solution is something that will fix the problem forever. An expedient or a workaround is a temporary solution. Okay, so how of telling her briefly what she thought of the attachment between him and Louisa? So the way that she introduces Wentworth's name is not directly talking about Wentworth, but talking about his relationship with Louisa. When this was told, his name distressed her no longer. To distress means to trouble, to make feel distress. Uh, as you can guess, it is related to the word stress. So it's something that makes you uncomfortable. And worried. Uh, no longer. So the first part of the question. How what is Anne's uh, solution? 
her her workaround is to not talk about Wentworth, but to talk about Wentworth's relationship to Louisa. Why does this work? I think for two reasons. One, because then they're not actually talking about Wentworth. He's just like part of what they're really talking about, which is the relationship. So when they're not talking about him, they don't have to think about the history with Anne and any future possibilities with Anne, right? It's the relationship. He's already almost taken, right? He's attached to someone else, so it's less awkward. The other reason is because the main topic of their conversation is Louisa's accident. So by connecting Louisa's accident to Louisa the person, and then Louisa the person to Louisa's relationship with Wentworth, this is a logical way to introduce Wentworth into the conversation. It's not like uh, Anne suddenly says, and then Captain Wentworth did blah, 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 right? First, she introduces Captain Wentworth into the conversation, and that makes it less awkward. Just like when uh, everybody meets in the same room, you have to wait for somebody to introduce you in order for you to talk to someone else. And we don't really follow this rule today anymore. Today, if you're in the same room, you can try to break the ice, right? But in those days, this would be very impolite. It, before someone introduces you, you don't know the person. They're complete strangers, and you're not supposed to talk to strangers. Um, so that's why um, when if you have the chance to go to a party with like foreigners, Americans. Um, first of all, American parties are basically an excuse to chat with people. Their parties are focused on talking and conversations. So when you go to a party, you usually you go because someone invites you. That is the person you are supposed to talk with. Like that is your um, company, like in the company of somebody. Uh, remember, company is not 公司, company is a group of people. Or sometimes you'll hear the word party to mean a group of people or like ifang. Uh, when you go to a restaurant and you and you say like a table, uh, let's say like you're going to a restaurant. Somebody has reserved your seats, your table. The name for that reservation is the party of so and so, a party of five, so like five people. But in English, we will say uh, Mr. Shu's party of five. So a party is a group of people. Um, also, company is a group of people, so uh, you will be entering that party in the company of your friend. And in order to meet new people, your friend has to introduce you to the new people and has to introduce the new people to you. This is called making the introduction. You have to make the introduction. Um, and once you meet someone new, then you become their friend and they can introduce you to even more people. Um, and this is a kind of politeness because it's a kind of trust. It's like writing a letter of recommendation. Right? You get somebody you trust to recommend you. It's the same idea. Uh, so this conversation is following the same logic. There's no reason to bring up Captain Wentworth, therefore you should not bring him up. Only when you find a way to introduce him into the conversation is it not as awkward. So that's what Anne does. OK, questions about one.
All right, two. Visits of charity. Let's look at this. Uh, remember, we discussed that Kellynch is not just a house, right? It's an area. You have Kellynch Hall, which is the main house where the Elliots live. Then you have Kellynch Lodge, which is where Lady Russell rents from Mr. Uh, Sir Walter. Then you have the surrounding area where like regular people live, non aristocratic people, non noble people. That place is called Kellynch Village. Kellynch Tsunjuang. And all of this land belongs to Sir Walter. Uh, so let's see. Uh, and this paragraph is talking about when after Anne has returned to Lady Russell, they're waiting for news from Lyme about Louisa. Like, is she recovering? Is she getting worse? At the same time, they were both occasionally thinking of Captain Benwick. This is the new friend Anne made uh, on her visit to Lyme, the captain who likes poetry. Lady Russell could not hear the doorbell without feeling that it might be his herald. A herald is a servant who comes before the master to announce the master to the place. Uh, so this is the person who will enter a room and say, may I present Captain Benwick? Uh, and then Captain Benwick can come into the room. Uh, this is also polite. Uh, it's to let everyone know that you have arrived, so you're not like secretly coming to a place. It's polite to let everybody know that you're here. Uh, so that you don't scare somebody, you don't shock somebody. Everybody is clear about what is happening. Today, the word herald is usually seen in the title of a newspaper. Uh, in Chinese, we usually translate these new newspapers as xian feng bao. Uh, originally, the idea of using the word herald in a newspaper is this newspaper is the first to give you the news. So it's kind of like a commercial in the title of the paper. Um, we also sometimes use this word today as a verb. To herald something, which means to announce the beginning or announce the arrival of something. So uh, every time Lady Russell hears the doorbell, she thinks it might be Captain Benwick's announcer, his herald. So he has arrived. Nor could Anne return from any stroll of solitary indulgence in her father's grounds or any visit of charity in the village without wondering whether she might see him or hear of him. So every time Anne does these things, she wonders whether she will see him or hear about him. Or sorry, every time she comes back, from doing these things. Uh, so maybe she hopes that when she walks into the house, Lady Russell will tell her, oh, Captain Benwick just visited, or here is Captain Benwick, and he's there. Uh, so like both of them are thinking about him. So what are these two things that Anne does? A stroll of solitary indulgence in her father's grounds. So walking around Kellynch, alone, solitary, alone, and it's indulgence because uh, indulgence in Chinese is zongrong. It's kind of impolite, but it's it's uh, like a luxury. It's like uh, treating yourself to something good. Doing it for yourself, and that's why this is an indulgence. A stroll is a walk. So walking around Kellynch by yourself for no reason. To Anne is a kind of 
luxury is a kind of indulgence. Remember, she's the kind of woman who always likes to help other people. Uh, she likes to make other people happy. So when she goes on a walk by herself for no reason, she thinks of it as something special, like a gift to herself. It's an indulgence. So that's the first thing. The second thing, a visit of charity in the village. So this is she goes to the village and go walks among the ordinary common people. And she like see she asks how everyone is doing, sees if she can help people. Maybe she can uh, give them some money if they need money. She can like find a doctor if someone is sick. This kind of visit. In Chinese, we will call this Ching Shing. Shing Hui. Like uh, uh, the ancient Chinese emperor would go uh, to the south to see his people. That kind of idea. So what might this say about class relations? It's a visit of charity because uh, Anne does not get anything in return for helping the ordinary people. She gives help and gets nothing back, so it's charity. But it's also something that upper class people were expected to do for the people who live on their land. Uh, we often think of nobles and kings Aristocrats, Guizhu, Jeji. We think of them as having all the power, and ordinary people have to follow their orders and always suffer. But if you think about it, that kind of society would never survive. It would never continue. Nobody likes being a, a lower class person with no power and have to follow crazy orders. Of course, they would fight back at the first chance. So why don't they fight back? How did this society survive and continue? The upper class made these visits of charity. They sometimes, once in a while, tried to make their people feel like that they really did care about these people. Do they really care? Who knows? But they have to try to comfort and take care of the ordinary people to prevent them from rebelling. This kind of behavior has a French name. It's called noblesse oblige. Uh, hang on, that's the wrong word. And in English, this is things that nobles are required to do. Oblige, this word looks like obligation, yi wu. It's the same root. And noblesse, of course, looks like noble, gui zu. Uh, so these are things that nobles are required to do. And there's no law about this. Like if if a noble doesn't do these things, you can't throw them into jail. Um, but everyone knows that if they don't try to act like they are taking care of their people, then it can become very dangerous. Now there's no law. This is simply a kind of etiquette, politeness, propriety. And this shows you the power of etiquette and politeness in that society. In the upper class, everybody is related to everybody else, right? They're all related to the king and queen. So every issue is a family issue. You don't have to use the law. You only have to use family relations. And so politeness Etiquette is something like family rules. 
you have to follow the family rules or the family will kick you out, something like that. Today, of course, most of us are not nobles. We live in a democracy. So when a democracy full of strangers has to get along, we can't really depend on so-called like family rules. That's why we have to use the law. The law is a set of clear and explicit rules that everybody has to follow. But for nobles, the etiquette and the politeness are not clear and explicit. They are not written down. That was the mean when waiting. It's simply a set of rules that people think is right. So if you don't, so that's why we can uh, in the novel, they sometimes talk about somebody has good manners. Somebody has elegant manners. Uh, and this is describing how they follow the unwritten rules of etiquette. If the rules are unwritten, then there are many ways that you can follow them. Some people do an excellent job and they are very considerate. Mian Mian Zhu Dao Le. These people are have elegant manners. Other people might only do the bare minimum. Uh, it to be called uh, in, in order to prevent being called impolite. This kind of manner is like a rude manner or like a rough manner. Um, and so that's why being polite and following etiquette is so important in this society. Those are the only rules that matter. This also explains why in today's society it often feels like the rich follow a different set of rules. Because like today, if you're rich enough, you know other rich people, you know important people, you know people in government, you know people with power. So instead of following the law, these rich people will often use uh, this kind of unwritten etiquette between friends or like between uh, kind of like kind of like they're the same family. So it, when when uh, a rich and connected person, when they do something wrong, usually they are not punished by the law. Usually they are punished socially. Other rich people, other powerful people will not talk to them. They will lose their connections. Um, and when a rich person does go to jail, as you know, when if you have watched The Wolf of Wall Street, uh, when the rich person does go to jail, often they are treated so much better than an ordinary person in jail. Another example is Harvey Weinstein. Uh, you may remember a few years ago, this was a Hollywood scandal. Weinstein was a very powerful producer, Zipianren, who sexually assaulted and abused many women in the industry. But because he was so powerful, few people dared to say uh, what kind of person he is, and um, nobody was willing to accuse him of his crimes. That changed a few years ago, and uh, Weinstein was found guilty and was sent to jail. But uh, the judge let him leave jail every day to go work at his foundation, at its San Jijing. Basically, the only difference before jail and after jail is he sleeps in a different place. Throughout the day, he does uh, his own activities. He still controls a lot of money, not for himself, but through his foundation. And he has to be tracked with an ankle monitor. But other than that, his life was basically uh, similar to before he went to jail. His real punishment was that other rich and famous and powerful people no longer talk to him. 
he still has much of his personal freedom, but he can't really do what he wants with that freedom. Not like before. So as you can see, like the re class relations of the 19th century England is very similar to class relations today in our society. Uh, it's just the details that are different. Do you have questions? OK, moving on to number three, Mr. Elliot's apology. Um, so Anne, one day when she comes back, she uh, discovers that Mr. Elliot has been here and has talked to uh, Elizabeth and Sir Walter. And, and now she's learning about what happened after the fact. Uh, it says here, Anne had a great deal to hear of Mr. Elliot, so she kept on hearing about him. He was not only pardoned, Ren they were delighted with him. They liked him a lot. Uh, how did this happen? He came in such readiness to apologize for the past. So he had made his apology. What does that look like? He had explained away all the appearance of neglect on his own side. On his own side means from himself. So he previously had neglected the Elliot family. But here he had explained all of it away. It had originated in misapprehension entirely. Uh, um, today we don't say misapprehension. Today we say it was a misunderstanding. But it's the same thing. To apprehend something means to understand something. So it's the same meaning. Uh, today we don't you still can say you apprehend something to mean that you understand something, but today the word apprehend is more often used to mean capture a criminal. You apprehended somebody means that you caught this criminal or suspect. Uh, you can also use apprehend. So how did he explain this misunderstanding? He had never had an idea of throwing himself off. Notice it says throwing himself off. Because in this situation, Sir Walter is more important. So if you separate, if Sir, if Mr. Elliot separates himself from the family, the family stays. It's Mr. Elliot who leaves. So it's throwing himself off. He had feared that he was thrown off, but knew not why. Huh. And delicacy kept him silent. Delicacy here means good manners. Right? So when he thought that his family had thrown him off, he didn't ask because he wanted to be polite. So the situation seems to be. The two sides of the family stopped talking to each other. And Mr. Elliot says he thought it was Sir Walter who stopped talking to him. But he didn't know why. Uh, so this again, this part is um, and is hearing about what happened. So this is Jane Austen telling us that Elizabeth, I guess, told Anne 
what Mr. Elliot had told Sir Walter and and Elizabeth. 就是很多层次的间接引述了。Uh, so it's not just a summary; it's following the conversation step by step. So the first step is he explained it was a misunderstanding. He explained what the misunderstanding was, and then when、uh, Sir Walter mentioned like why they stopped talking, which is this part, upon the hint of having spoken disrespectfully. Or carelessly of the family and the family honors. So, like when when Mr. Elliot says he doesn't know why he was cut off, then Sir Walter explains this is the reason. They heard that Mr. Elliot had spoken disrespectfully and carelessly about the family and the family honors, which means the family title, the Sir part, Sir Walter. So, when Mr. Elliot learns that this is the reason, he was quite indignant. He was very angry. He, who had ever boasted of being an Elliot,、uh, let's go jump to the end of the sentence. It's an exclamation point. The 惊叹号结尾 So we know what he's really saying is, 怎么可能是我 And so after that, he will give some reasons why it cannot be him, and the reasons are, he had always, ever means always, boasted about being an Elliot. 都以身为 Elliot 的人自豪 And whose feelings as to connection, 关于家庭关系的想法，或是的情感 were only too strict. To suit the unfeudal tone of the present day, so his views about family connections is strict, and it's too strict to suit the unfeudal tone of the present day, which means it's even more strict than other people think about family. So how could he, who loves being an Elliot? And who cares about family connections? How could he have said something bad about his family? That's his response.、Uh, in Chinese, it would be, 我这么以身为 Elliot 的人自豪，我这么看重家庭关系的人，怎么可能会污蔑自己家里的人呢 ？He was astonished indeed. 太令人惊讶了。But his character. So his personality and reputation. Character also means reputation. 他的名誉 and general conduct. 一般行为 must refute it. 从他的为人跟名誉名声可以驳斥这样的谣言 Refute means to like, uh, 就驳斥 to prove wrong. He could refer Sir Walter to all who knew him. This is a recommendation of mine. If you don't know me, you can go to my friends. Refer someone to someone, which means you can go and ask that person. So today,、uh, a letter of recommendation is also called a letter of reference, or simply your references. People who can say、uh, that you are. A good person and should have this job or whatever. And certainly, the pains he had been taking on this, the first opportunity of reconciliation, to be restored to the footing of a relation and heir presumptive. To okay, so to take pains. Means to put in effort.、Uh, to do what? On the first, this first opportunity.、Uh, these commas are a positive. These two are from the point of the verb. So, this. What is this? This is the first opportunity of reconciliation. 最最早的和解机会
第一时间的和解机会。呃、uh, ，so at this moment, putting in efforts to be restored to the footing of a relation， 呃，就是回归家良好家庭关系，恢复良好家庭关系。Footing here means stance. Both of these words have the same meaning. Stance comes from the word stand, right? A stance is how you stand. In other words, where you put your feet. So this is also your position. Those are the lead song. Uh, so to be restored to the footing of a relation means to return to the position of being part of the family. And heir presumptive. If you remember from the first chapter, if Sir Walter does not have a son, Mr. Elliot will inherit everything. So he is the heir presumptive. Uh, 假设的继承人，我目前的继承人。So all of his efforts to do this are also a strong proof of his opinions on the subject. What are his opinions on the subject? Well, okay, first of all, what is the subject? The subject is family relations, and what are his opinions? Uh, these opinions. He loves being an Elliot. He cares about his family. Those opinions. Uh, so. This first part of his apology. Let's take this first part first. Uh, what values does he appeal to? First, it was a misunderstanding. So it's not his fault. It's not Sir Walter's fault, right? It's nobody's fault. He doesn't blame anybody. And why did he not try to find out the truth behind this misunderstanding? Because of delicacy of etiquette. Truly, Mao. So this is also appealing to the value of good manners. Then he says he loves being an Elliot. And he thinks that family connections are very important. So family connections, this is uh, the common view of the day. But being an Elliot, this appeals to Sir Walter's vanity. It's a good thing to be an Elliot. Uh, and then he says you can ask other people. And we know that Sir Walter also only trusts certain people. Remember when he was trying to find someone to rent his house and uh, Mr. Shepherd tells him, oh, there's this Admiral, Admiral uh, Croft. And Sir Walter's first reaction is, who is this Admiral? We don't know an Admiral. We don't know him. Everyone. Uh, and Mr. Elliot says, ask anyone who knows him. So it's a similar value about uh, relationships with people. And then finally, uh, he mentions that he would love to continue to be the heir presumptive. He would love to inherit everything that Sir Walter has. Which means that he cares about what Sir Walter has. What Sir Walter has is valuable to him. So all of these values are things that Sir Walter also likes. Um, now, if you remember, the first rumor about Mr. Elliot is he doesn't like being an Elliot. He just responded. The second rumor is that he had married a common person, not a noble. Uh, and so he had disgraced the Elliot name. Uh, so this next paragraph, he is going to respond to the second rumor. 
And how does he respond? Let's take a short break and we'll talk about it when we come back. So how will he explain, how will Mr. Elliot explain his marriage? The circumstances of his marriage too were found to admit of much extenuation. Extenuation means uh, explanation of something bad. Uh, so like if it's a bad explanation, we would call it an excuse, Jekyll. An extenuation is a good excuse, a good reason. Uh, in English today, um, we usually say extenuating circumstances. So some kind of situation that is acceptable as a reason for something bad. To admit of means allow. Uh, so his marriage also had some reasons. This was an article not to be entered on by himself, but a very intimate friend of his. So an article uh, does not mean uh, a passage of writing. Here, article means uh, in Chinese, like in a law, right? Number one, number two. In English, these are called articles. Article one, article two, article three. Uh, so this information, this situation, this statement, uh, here it uses the word article. Not to be entered on by himself. So it's not for himself to explain. And this is the, the polite thing, right? If. OK, the previous paragraph is not really explaining. He's not saying this is why I said those things. He's presenting his own version of the situation. But here he cannot say that the marriage was a misunderstanding. It's a fact he was married to a common woman. So. It would be impolite. It would be very strange for himself to try to explain why this bad thing happened. Um, it would sound like you're trying to ask for mercy or like trying to ask for understanding. So it has to be explained by someone else. Who is this someone else? A very intimate or a very close friend of his, Colonel Wallace. And why should we trust him? Because he is a highly respectable man. Perfectly the gentleman. And not an ill looking man, Sir Walter added. Because Sir Walter cares about what other people look like, right? So this man does not look too bad. He is not an ill looking man. Ill does not mean sick, it just means bad. Um, so in English, we have a phrase called for better or worse, right? Uh, it, the original version of this was for good or ill. Which is the same thing for better or worse. Um, who was living in very good style in Marlborough buildings. OK, so he's not a noble. He's just a colonel, right? So he doesn't have lots of land. Instead, he lives in an apartment, Marlborough buildings. Or I guess uh, like a, a walk up. But it's in very good style. 
and had at his own particular request been admitted to their acquaintance through Mr. Elliot. So we said that you have to wait for somebody to introduce you before you can join the party. Here, he asked to be introduced, Han Mao Sui Zijian, right, by his own request to be admitted to their acquaintance. 就是进入他们的认识圈, uh, through Mr. Elliot. So he asked Mr. Elliot to introduce him to Sir Walter and Elizabeth. And so therefore, once Colonel Wallace uh, formed a relationship with Sir Walter, he had mentioned one or two things relative to the marriage. Today we would say related to the marriage or regarding the marriage, which made a material difference in the discredit of it. It made a difference. It made a significant difference, a material difference. Uh, in the discredit of the marriage. So people think it was a bad marriage, did not give credit to the marriage. Uh, but what Colonel Wallace says made a difference to this reputation. OK, so what did Colonel Wallace say? OK, first of all, by the way, when it, when it says that Colonel Wallace wanted Mr. Elliot to introduce him to the Elliots, it could be Colonel Wallace wanted to set the record straight, wanted to tell the Elliots about what, what really happened in this marriage, or it could be that Mr. Elliot asked Colonel Wallace to tell them and that the etiquette is to ask Mr. Elliot to introduce Colonel Wallace as if Colonel Wallace himself wanted to know the Elliots. Colonel Wallace可能是個裝腳啦。就是可能是Mr.Elliot就是請他來,但是李傑送的關係應該是講說其實是Colonel自己想要來。We don't really know. Uh, so what did Colonel Wallace say? Colonel Wallace had known Mr. Elliot long, had been well acquainted also with his wife, had perfectly understood the whole story. In other words, we, according to Colonel Wallace, we should trust him. She, Mr. Elliot's wife, was certainly not a woman of family, right? So a commoner, but was well educated Accomplished, rich, aha, has money, and excessively in love with his friend, Mr. Elliot. So she was, she basically had everything except for a good family. There had been the charm. She had sought him. So this charm is probably Mr. Elliot's charm. Uh, Mr. Elliot Hamiran. Therefore, she had sought him. Without that attraction, not all her money would have tempted Elliot. So this is saying that Mr. Elliot doesn't marry someone improper just for money. It's also for love. And Sir Walter was moreover assured of her having been a very fine woman. Uh, the footnote will tell you that fine here means good looking. She was a very handsome, very pretty woman. And this is important to Sir Walter because again, Sir Walter cares about what people look like. Here was a great deal to soften the business. Deal here does not mean exchange. A great deal means a lot. Many, many things. To soften the business. The business is this situation. Uh, even today we will say uh, if a situation is bad, we might say, oh, it's a terrible business. 
So situation to soften the situation, to ameliorate the situation, to uh, a very fine woman with a large fortune in love with him. Right? Everything except for the good family. Sir Walter seemed to admit it as complete apology. So after Colonel Wallace explained the situation, Sir Walter took this as, as just like if Mr. Elliot had come to apologize. 就解释得这么清楚, and though Elizabeth could not see the circumstance in quite so favorable a light, to see something or someone in a good light, to see in a good light, means to look at it positively. So even though Elizabeth could not look at this situation so positively, she allowed it be a great extenuation. So even though Elizabeth was not entirely uh, happy with the situation, with the explanation, she still accepted it as an extenuation, as a good explanation. So in the uh, part of Mr. Elliot's reconciliation having to do with his marriage, he appeals to every value except for family because the uh, the fact that his wife did not have a good family is true. He can't do anything about that. But he could say that his wife is beautiful, she's rich, and she loves him. So in every other respect, she was a good choice for him. Uh, but she had died. And that's also very convenient for Mr. Elliot, right? If his wife is dead, there's no proof of any of this. It's just uh, what he tells us. And his friend, Colonel Wallace. But Colonel Wallace is his friend. Can we trust him? Who knows? Um, and I'm not adding suspicion to his apology. The novel already makes his apology very suspicious. We don't. Anne does not hear the apology in person. She hears it from her family. Her family have already accepted his apology, so they're not neutral. Uh, Sir Walter and Elizabeth, Mr. Elliot. So in In this way, the novel is telling us. Don't trust everything you hear about Mr. Elliot's apology. The second part of the question, why is the unfeudal tone of the present day a bad thing? Right, uh, Mr. Elliot says that um, his feelings about family connection were too strict to suit the unfeudal tone of the present day. So his feelings about family connections are good. Therefore, the unfeudal tone is bad. Why? Well, the answer is simply because for the upper class, they are still a feudal society. Uh, the king creates titles as rewards and gives these nobles land. So it's a feudal society. Therefore, a feudal tone is considered a good thing. And if the present day, if modern day, 
is unfeudal, that's a bad thing. OK, questions about three. All right, moving to question four. Mr. Elliot's personality. Let's see. Wait, where is it? Um, <clears throat> here, she was sure that he had not been happy in marriage. Why? Well, how does the novel describe him? Um, this is from the point of view of Lady Russell. Everything united in him. So he had everything. Good understanding. Here it means he was smart, easy to understand everything. Correct opinions. <laughs> Knowledge of the world and a warm heart. He had strong feelings of family attachment and family honor without pride or weakness. He lived with the liberality of a man of fortune, but without display. So in his daily life, he didn't worry about money. He's open and free, right? Liberal, just like he doesn't have to worry about losing things or losing money, but he does not show off his money. He doesn't care about display appearance. He judged for himself in everything essential. So everything important, he did not just listen to other people. He made his own judgments. But without defying public opinion in any point of worldly decorum. So when he does make a judgment, his judgments always fit with public opinion in every point of decorum. Decorum means etiquette, politeness. So his judgments are always considered by everybody to be polite. He was steady, which means reliant, reliable, sorry, reliable, dependable, called it. Observant, moderate, candid, which means honest. Never run away with by spirits or by selfishness. To be run away with by something means to be carried away. And we still say this in English today, to be carried away. By what? By spirits, which here means emotions, or by selfishness. So he never forgets himself, Wang Wang, because of emotions or because of selfishness. Which fancied itself strong feeling. So here it's saying that for many people, what they call strong feeling is actually a kind of selfishness because it ignores other people. But Sir Walter, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Elliot does not have this problem. And with a sensibility to what was amiable and lovely. So he had a sensibility, he had a taste, he had a feeling for what was amiable, which means friendly and lovely. And he had a value for all the felicities of domestic life. So he cared about, he valued all the happiness of home life. So this is something that many men don't have, right? In the traditional society, men don't have to worry about the house. But Mr. Elliot does care about the house and he values all the good things about the household life. This is a quality that people 
of fancied enthusiasm and violent agitation seldom really possess. So few people who have some kind of passion understand this part of life. And by people, it means men. 意思是说,如果一个男人他对什么事情很热衷,或是对某种议题很自立,他很少会去关心家庭事务。uh, so this is also uh, a special use of language. Fancied enthusiasm means imagined passion. And violent agitation uh, in English would be um, like yeah, I think we would still say violent agitation. To agitate for something means to fight for something, like a cause, more than ET. So someone who, a man who cares about what he thinks is his passion or what he fights for in society, seldom, rarely understand the happiness of household life. But Mr. Elliot understands. After all of these good qualities, Lady Russell thinks she was sure that he had not been happy in marriage. Why? What is the relationship between these two parts? First of all, what kind of a person is Mr. Elliot? I think at this point, the only way to describe him is perfect. He has all the good qualities and none of the bad qualities. When you read this kind of thing, immediately you should be suspicious. How could someone be this perfect? How? Um, and Lady Russell also suspects there must be something imperfect. And if his person, his character, his personal life and behavior and manners and attitude were all perfect, then what is not perfect must have something that must be something outside of himself. And so Lady Russell says, oh, it must be a bad marriage. It must have been an unhappy marriage. That's the only way to make sense of this person. 那如果不是他本人以外的,那就是他的婚姻吧。So he must have had an unhappy marriage. And there's another reason. It's so impossible to find one perfect person. How more impossible is it to find a second perfect person and let those two people get married? So by simple probability, his wife was probably not perfect. And so Mr. Elliot was probably not very happy in that marriage. Uh, and later on, Colonel Wallace, Mr. Elliot's friend, said it, right? He had an unhappy marriage. And Lady Russell saw it, as we just said. Right? She saw from his person he must have had an unhappy marriage. But it had been no unhappiness to sour his mind. So oftentimes when a person is deeply, deeply unhappy in their life, especially in marriage, because in that time you can't get a divorce. When you're unhappy with something you cannot change, it affects your mind. Today we call this depression or maybe bipolar, manic depression, um, In those days they didn't have these words, so they simply said that it soured his mind. When something sours, 
Uh, we today we use this word as a verb to describe milk that has gone bad. 牛奶坏掉了 We say that the milk has soured, 变酸了 So that's what this means. It has gone bad. Um, but in this case, even though his marriage was unhappy, his mind had not soured, and he is still. Now thinking of a second choice of wife. So even though his first marriage was unhappy, he still seems like he wants to get married again. OK, do you have questions about four? OK， 嗯、um, ，我稍微爆个雷 ，Mr. Elliot 确实不是一个完美的人。我们之后会读到他的真实面目。这个电影里面没有演 ，This was not part of the film、um,。But Mr. Elliot does have his secrets， and he's not as perfect as Lady Russell thinks。We'll get to that later in the book。Question five。The pride of Anne Elliot. So here、uh, Anne is talking with Mr. Elliot. Um, you know, Anne has come back to live with her family. Mr. Elliot keeps visiting Sir Walter. They were going to meet sooner or later. And after they meet, uh, Mr. Elliot seems to have some kind of attraction. To Anne, he is attracted to her. They talk a lot together.、Um, as you may remember from the film, they develop a kind of relationship with each other.、Uh, so here they're talking about、um, whether Anne should go with Sir Walter and Elizabeth to visit Lady Dalrymple and Miss Carter. If you remember from the movie, these are two very important、uh, family members. They are very close to the king and queen. So wherever they go, all of the nobles want to be with them, to be in the same party, to meet them, to form a connection. But Anne doesn't want to go.、Um, and. Anne says, "Sorry, Miss Carteret. Miss Carteret, why? Because、uh, Anne was ashamed that Sir Walter would want to be a part of the crowd of people to visit Lady Dalrymple. Why? Here she gives her reasons. Had Lady Dalrymple and her daughter even been very agreeable?" Or friendly, she would still have been ashamed of the agitation they created. The the, there's a sudden agitation. But they were nothing. There was no superiority of manner. I'm a Li Jie, may be 比较好 There's no accomplishment. There's no understanding. None of these are better than other people. Lady Dalrymple had acquired the name or. Reputation of a charming woman because she had a smile and a civil answer for everybody. So, 单纯是因为她对大家都很很微笑，然后说一句好话，大家都觉得她很有礼貌，很迷人。Uh, of course, the real reason is because she is higher in rank. 她的排名比较高。And the lady, the woman who accompanies her, Miss Carteret. Was still less to say. Was so plain and so awkward. She would never have been tolerated except for her birth. So the only reason people treat her well is because she was born in with into a good family.、Uh, Lady Russell knows all this, right? She had expected something better, but yet she says it was an acquaintance worth having. It's still worth getting to know them to form this connection. 
But when Anne spoke her opinion to Mr. Elliot, he agreed. But still maintained that a, a, it's a good family connection. And that therefore it is good company. To this Anne replies, my idea of good company, Mr. Elliot, is the company of clever, uh, well informed people. So who, who has knowledge? People who are smart and have knowledge. And who have a great deal of conversation. So they're smart, they know things, and they know how to talk. That is what I call good company. How the Huoban. Mr. Elliot replies, You are mistaken. That is not good company. That is the best company. Good company requires only birth, education, and manners. Uh, my cousin Anne shakes her head. So Mr. Elliot is still talking. So we know from this line that Anne is shaking her head. She is not satisfied. Um, and so Anne, let's see, where does she say? Where does she say this? Um, There we go. I suppose I have more pride than any of you. Um, so her response is to Mr. Elliot is, yes, she sighed at Tai Chi. We shall indeed be known to be related to them. So most people think this is a good thing, but Anne sighs at Tang Kochi. She doesn't think it's a good thing. And so because she thinks something different from everybody else, she says, I have more pride than any of you. And she says this while smiling. He's on something like that. Or like it's on Kirchida Wei Shao. It's a polite smile. So is this an example of her pride? Is she prouder than all the other Elliots? Well, in the traditional sense, no, right? If pride means pride in having a good name and good connections, then Anne has the least pride of all the Elliots. She is the only Elliot who doesn't care about family connections and having a good family name, knowing the right people, being in the right kind of society, uh, association with people. But in setting herself apart from everybody else, in thinking something different, in thinking something better according to her, when she says that it is better to have people who are smart and can talk well than to have someone who's important. She's saying that she's better than everybody else. She her, herself, she alone knows w what it is to be in good company, to have a good group of people. And everybody else is wrong. Now, Mr. Elliot agrees with Anne that it is better to be able to know, to be smart, to know things and to talk to people than to be important. He agrees. And yet even he says, well, we should still try to form the connection. We should still get to know them. 
and let them know us. So in this sense, Anne is also putting herself above Mr. Elliot. Mr. Elliot is saying, yes, it's not the best thing to do, but we should still do it. Whereas Anne is saying, no, it's not a good thing. We're not going to do it. So this is also, I guess, a kind of pride, right? It's a jiao ao. Pride in herself, in her values, pride in her, uh, the way that she values people. So we see that this kind of pride, or I guess you can call this arrogance, um, it, it may be in a different direction from all the other Elliots, but it's still a similar quality, thinking that I myself am better than everybody else. Now, from a modern point of view, from a, the point of view of today, I think most of us would agree with Anne, right? But especially for the nobles of that society, as we have said, relationships with the king and queen are the most important thing. So Anne is not just going against her own family's values, she's going against the values of her whole society. Yeah, that is, it could be seen as a kind of pride. Questions? Okay, so before next week, please read chapters 17 to 20. 我问一下你们目前读的状况还好吗? 我知道一开始可能有点困难,有稍微好一点吗? 还是说还是很难? 还是有点难 然后人为什么会这样子想这样子做，就可以了。那单字文法的部分可以以后就是被动的吸收，或是真的卡住了，你再慢慢去查也可以。然后在读的时候，呃，你们读到哪里，懂到哪里，就在某个地方抄个笔
啊啊，当然就是孩子卡住的话，查不出来的话，还是就是可以问我。嗯、呃，可以寄信，或是现在基本上我每天都会上 Teams， 也可以传讯息给我。Okay, let's start from chapter 13. So after the accident, remember, uh, some people stay behind to take care of Louisa. I think it's Mary. Mary stays behind. And everybody else goes back to Uppercross, uh, where the Musgroves live. And then like the Musgroves, uh, the men go back and forth to pass messages. Uh, to keep everybody aware of how Louisa is doing. But Anne technically is not a member of the Musgrove family and is also not a man, so she has nothing to do. She's stuck at Uppercross and bored. We readers also find this situation not optimal. Because we know that Anne is the best person to take care of other people. We saw her take care of um, Walter Musgrove, the young kid when he was sick. We saw her take care of uh, Louisa right after the accident, right? She said to call a doctor. We, we should go to Harville's house. She was the one in charge, but now because of etiquette, she has no standing to continue helping. So even though she has the most skill needed in this situation, she cannot help. How frustrating this must feel. So that's how chapter 13 begins. The remainder of Anne's time at Uppercross, comprehending only two days. OK, comprehending does not mean understanding. Today, instead of comprehend, we would say comprise. Or made up of. So she only spent two more days at Uppercross was spent entirely at the mansion house, so not the cottage, right? Charles and Mary live in the cottage. Their parents, Mr. and Mrs. Musgrove, live in the big house or the mansion house. That's where Anne was. And she had the satisfaction of knowing herself extremely useful there. That's an immense thing to do. Both as an immediate companion, the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Musgrove, and as assisting in all those arrangements for the future, which in Mr. and Mrs. Musgrove's distressed state of spirits would have been difficulties. So because of Louisa's accident, Mr. and Mrs. Musgrove are very worried. They aren't in the proper state of mind to make preparations and arrangements. So that's what Anne did. They had an early account from Lyme the next morning. You're in like ball. Account is a ball call. Today, account we say like huto, like a bank account. But the original meaning is an account book. So an account can mean like the a clear idea of the situation from the account book or from somebody telling you what happened. Louisa was much the same. No symptoms worse than before had appeared. Charles came a few hours afterwards to bring a later and more particular account. Particular here means detailed with more details. So what happened was first thing in the morning, Captain Harville sent some servant or somebody unimportant to tell everybody at Uppercross the, the general situation about Louisa. Nothing better, nothing worse. 
And only after waking up and preparing did Charles, who is somebody important, come to give a detailed explanation. 这就是先报重要消息，然后细节之后再慢慢讲。I think this is also still a very important idea. If you have important information, you should first let people know the important part, and then when you have time, explain the details. Uh, not just like in person, but also in writing letters. 在写信的时候，先把重点放在前面。Right, make the important information clear and then explain the details. It's a more polite way to write a letter. Charles was tolerably cheerful. A speedy cure must not be hoped. So Louisa will not get better very quickly. But everything was going on as well as the nature of the case admitted. Remember, admit means allow, ring shu, rong shu. So everything was going as well as could be hoped for. Nature of the case, Zijian Sitching the Banzu. In speaking of the Harvilles, he seemed unable to satisfy his own sense of their kindness, especially of Mrs. Harville's exertions as a nurse. 简单来说，就是他讲到Harville这家人，呃，情感溢于言表之外，再怎么讲他们的好都没办法讲完，unable to satisfy，无法满足他心里对他人家的感受，尤其是Mrs. Harville 当照顾Louisa的那个护士的那个角色。Mrs. Harville, she really left nothing for Mary to do. He, Charles, and Mary had been persuaded to go early to their inn last night. So remember, Mary had, was staying there to help take care of Louisa, but Mrs. Harville did such a good job that he and Mary, Charles and Mary, went back to their own hotel room. Mary had been hysterical again this morning. Um, we don't like the word hysterical today anymore. Hysterical is a word that traditionally has only been used to describe women. And it's connected with a very sexist history of psychology. Um, the original meaning of the word hysterical is a woman has lost her senses. And it's only women because the word hysterical is connected to the word uterus. And the original idea, this is from the ancient Greek word for uterus. And, and the uh, the original idea was that the Greeks thought that a woman uh, was controlled by her uterus. Like they didn't have an idea of the brain. They thought that the control for a woman came from the uterus, and if the uterus moved to a different place in her body, she would lose her logic and rationality. Uh, of course, even men can also lose their senses when they are overwhelmed, right? Today we say this is an emotional breakdown, jing sen bong kui. So we don't use the word hysterical anymore. Um, but, you know, this is a very accurate way to describe Mary. She often loses her senses. She says that she's sick when she's not sick. She needs people to take care of her. It's the kind of person that she is. Uh, and then Charles adds, he almost wished she had been prevailed on to come home the day before. To be prevailed on means to be successfully persuaded. So this sentence in Chinese is, 他差点希望, 他只差没希望Mary 
前一天被人说服跟着他一起回来。So even her own husband is saying she's not very useful staying in line. Okay, do you have questions so far? Okay, uh, so see you guys next week.